Howdy folks, this is just a quick look at the menu and configurable input systems from Platformer Pro. We can see in the inspector here, we have a main menu defined under a UI canvas. And there's three children objects. There's no visible components on these, the menu works out how to render them based on the prefabs you supply. Here I've got a menu item for starting the game, another for drilling in to a sub-menu, and a third for exiting. In the sub-menu we've got various options for configuring the keys. These include selecting an input or configuring the various keys. You can see the options for these are controlled through drop-downs and various other input fields. Let's hit play and see what it looks like. So we can move through the menu and drill in. We can cycle through the inputs I've defined, in which in this case there's only two, one for controller and one for keyboard. And we can also move up and down through here and set keys. So for example, we could set the jump key to be spacebar. You'll notice our name has changed to custom keyboard. We can move to the default controller and I'll Turn on my controller. We can set buttons, so we can use a different joypad button there. You'll notice if I pick a button that was already taken, it clears the old one. You can also set the axis, so when we do that, it'll ask us to hold one direction and then the other to ensure it can work out the way that the axis works. And then we can go back and play the game with the controller. And you'll notice also that I can control the menu using my controller once it's configured. So there's a few parts to look at here. If we consider first the menus, you may have noticed there were some effects and colors in play. Now none of this is uh, hard-coded. So the menu effects, for example, use the same effect system that we use in games. So if we wanted to change the effects, let's just for a quick sample, add a fade effect. And we'll fade to alpha zero. Fade in one second. And we'll set that as the height effect on the menu item. You can have multiple effects. So what does that do? You see the menu item faded out instead of sliding away. Now I haven't created a show effect, so if I go back, we won't see anything. The fix of that to that of course is to add another fade. and this time fade up to white. And assign that to the show effect. Oops. We can also create different kinds of menus. I've got a few samples in place, so here's a scrolling menu. So very similar, I'll enable this, disable the other one. I've only created it on the main menu. And uh, basically this menu item has a couple of additional settings to control how it scrolls. If we hit play, see we've got the same options, but rendered in a different way. So I hadn't assigned a few of the variables there, so it was a little bit rough, but I think you get the idea. For the keyboard and joystick configuration, I think the use there is fairly self-explanatory, but 
one thing worth looking at is the defaults. So if we go to our project and see our predefined resources, let's duplicate the keyboard input and rename it to WASD keyboard input. Edit that in a text editor. Set the keys. Save the data. Just hit refresh on the asset. Sometimes it's a little bit slow to update resources. Now, if we go to our sub menu for input selector, let's add a new one. We'll call this Keyboard 2, and we'll load the resource called WASD Keyboard Configuration, I think it was. Oops, spelt it wrong. Well, let's just copy the name. That guarantees I'm not going to spell it wrong. Press play. Again, that we put a little bit messed up, but so we now have keyboard one, keyboard two. So the system's not quite finished. There's a few little bugs in the demo there, but it's almost ready. I uh, hope you enjoyed.